but everybody is low already. That's the big problem in my opinion. As you've started to see already, there's a lot of misconceptions when you start talking about testosterone. I mean, way back in episode 10, we talked about manganese and how manganese, you know, a lot of people are saying take manganese supplements or something and increase testosterone, but it can actually decrease your testosterone. And that's an important thing to know. More recently, we talked about ice baths and cold showers and things and how that decreases your testosterone, even though a lot of people are telling you the opposite. People are saying, oh, take a cold shower, increase your testosterone. It decreases it. And of course, in the most previous episode, we just talked about how age-related testosterone declines aren't really a thing. A lot of misconceptions. And so you have to be careful when you look into testosterone research and you know, and really look at the actual research and not just what people are saying. So the question is, what are the health problems from low testosterone? Are they, you know, exaggerated? Are there people out there telling you there's a hundred health problems and there's only one or there's none? I mean, what's the reality here? Well, there's definitely health problems with low testosterone. This paper we talked about last time from the journal of PLOS One, 2014. It's called a validated age-related normative model for male total testosterone. It shows increasing variance but no decline after age 40 years. No decline. Remember this paper? No decline after 40 years. This paper has an awesome little summary of the health problems from testosterone deficiency. Now these are people with really low testosterone, but still, what happens? Uh, the diagnosis is based on clinical biochemical findings. They say this is low testosterone or testosterone deficiency and it's associated with impaired sexual function, of course, impaired cognitive function, brain problems, brain function problems, depression, that's big, that's huge, abdominal obesity, not just fat overall, fat in your belly abdominal obesity in your abs low bone and muscle mass of course i mean and people think of muscle mass they recognize yeah low testosterone is going to lead to low muscle mass but even your bones are going to be weaker and diabetes diabetes low testosterone increases diabetes and pre-diabetic states that may lead to an increase in risk of cardiovascular disease I'll talk about that in a different episode but that's the list. That's kind of the summary of the really big ones. You know, I mean, there's probably some obscure science on a lot of little health issues that may or may not be related to lower testosterone, but these are the big ones. Abdominal fat, depression, cognitive brain declines. Um, and, you know, it's that simple. You really don't need to, you know, sit and go through all the details on that. Because I think if you've got that list, you recognize already, yeah, we don't want low testosterone. We don't want chronically low testosterone. And we have a problem in our culture. Yeah, our testosterone doesn't, our total testosterone doesn't really decline after age 40, like everybody says. But everybody is low already. That's the big problem, in my opinion. We're all too low. You know, the range is between 20 or 200 and 900 nanograms per deciliter, that's such a ridiculous range. That's like saying go jog, you know, either a block or 10 miles. And that's the optimal amount you should jog. It's like, yeah, one block, that's hardly anything. 10 miles, yeah, that's pretty extreme if you're not trained. That's such a huge range and it changes so much from day to day that we've got to talk about how to bring it up and keep it up. And in the next episode, we'll talk about gut bacteria and how that can impact your testosterone. Little known fact. But really quick first, I want to show you this paper. 2017 just came out. It's, it's uh, in the Journal of the European Society for Endocrinology. Endocrinology, hormones. Um, obviously, a, a journal you want to sit down and read every day. <laughs> um, it's called Individual Testosterone Decline and Future Mortality Risk in Men mortality and that's one of the reasons i just want to bring this paper in because 
mortality. All cause mortality is what they're looking at. We talked about this with saunas. That means dying from anything. You know, whether that's heart problems, whether that's, you know, <laughs> I mean anything. Any, ca any cause of death. Here's what they found. Men with the most pronounced decline in total testosterone had higher all-cause mortality risk. These are studies with over a thousand people here. Higher all-cause mortality. And by the way, they open up by saying male aging is characterized by a decline in testosterone with substantial variability between subjects. That was the problem we talked about last time. Is yeah, when you you know when you look into testosterone, you it looks like aging causes a decline, but that's because some people in older age have crazy low levels. It doesn't mean everybody's just dropping off at 1% per year. It means there's some people with crazy low levels. You don't want to be that person. Again, all-cause mortality, I mean, that's about as compelling evidence as anything, you know, from low testosterone. And by the way, I looked at the, that was the abstract. They say total testosterone increase, you know, low total T. But then I looked at the actual data here, and free testosterone is the same. So if you have low total or low free testosterone, your all-cause all mortality is higher. So, you know, again, major health problems from low testosterone. As a culture, we're all pretty low. We're all well below where I think we should be and where we were historically, even 50 years ago, certainly 100 years ago, even thousands of years ago, as I talk about in my book. So let's talk about bringing it up in the next episodes.